Hello again, everyone. Dave Benson here, Senior Advisor for Threat Mitigation and Global Operations for the Center for Personal Protection and Safety, CPPS. I'd like to have a little bit of a conversation with you today to discuss a topic that's somewhat controversial in the world of violence prevention, and that is the potential problem with designating your organization's policy as a zero-tolerance workplace violence prevention and intervention policy. So why is that the case? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's contrary to our standards. Uh, both ANSI standards, both the original one and the uh, international one, make it very clear that zero tolerance approaches to workplace violence prevention and intervention is not a best practice. And I'll talk a little bit later on what they do recommend uh, and how you can amend uh, your existing policies if you already have followed the, the zero tolerance format. Number two, it can be perceived as punitive in nature. In other words, if I make a mistake, um, I'm going to be disciplined and may well be terminated, regardless of the circumstances. Likewise, if I report a concern to my supervisors, to my managers, uh, to the organization, uh, that could result in ruining somebody's life, their career, uh, and livelihood. And so by its very nature, it has a chilling effect on that information flow that is so vitally important to a comprehensive violence prevention, uh, prevention policy. You know, information flowing up uh, from the uh, general population up to managers and supervisors, oftentimes up to specialized groups such as uh, multidisciplinary threat management group, all the way up that chain uh, can be stifled and chilled if there's a real concern that there is no recourse if someone makes a, st a mistake and violates this policy. So it actually discourages reporting, which can have an, an extremely negative uh, impact on your program. The other reality is, as studies have shown, zero tolerance policies do little or nothing to decrease, to decrease violence. Um, and that is our goal. We want to be proactive, not reactive. And that we feel that uh, many times a zero tolerance approach to workplace violence prevention and intervention uh, is more reactive in that regard. Hence, it may also increase your legal liability. So uh, it's not particularly helpful if we have people that are uh, afraid to report or won't report uh, because the, for fear of reprisal or retribution. And frankly, it can create more problems than it can solve. Um, or it can be a morale issue. Uh, it can be more likely that they're going to withhold and not share that information, try to manage the problem themselves, which is the antithesis uh, of a comprehensive program where the information flows, gets that information to the right people, in a timely manner so we can come up with comprehensive and effective intervention strategies. And as I said before, uh, in my zero tolerance policies are reactive, they're not preventative. They don't take any uh, steps uh, to how we might be able to mitigate it from happening or maybe avoid it from happening. It only talks about this punitive response uh, if there's violations of the policy. So if the zero tolerance approach to workplace violence prevention and intervention is not the way to go in our view, what is the alternative? Well, uh, all the prevailing standards advocate a concept called no threats, no violence policy. It's okay to have no to uh, tolerance for the behavior and the threats and threats of violence, but it's the response uh, that, this pro that this philosophy uh, diverges and makes it much more effective. And in fact, it, it provides an empathic, much more balanced approach to recognition and intervention of uh, potential uh, acts of violence or behaviors of concern. With each case being dealt with case by case basis, uh, it might, it could still be wind up with disciplinary action or termination, but it could also easily be a referral to your EAP. It could be some time off. It could be changing a position. It could be counseling. It could be talking to 
the leaders involved and how they're dealing uh, with their with their staff. What are some of the underlying reasons why these behaviors of concern uh, are have manifested itself instead of just blanketly uh, uh, coming up with a punishment uh, because it's a, 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 a violation of the policy. So in closing, um, effective workplace violence prevention and intervention programs are flexible, they're adaptive, uh, they deal with the organization, the environment, and the circumstances. Yes, there are guardrails, yes, there are guidelines, but they should vary in an empathic way from the simple counseling session uh, all the way up uh, to EAP referral, uh, some time off, uh, some family leave, perhaps. And then, yes, we do include other forms of progressive discipline and then ultimately separation or termination. But that should not be the immediate uh, and final result uh, of your workplace violence prevention and intervention policy. So instead of zero tolerance, let's talk about having a no threats, no violence policy. So that's it for today. Uh, as always, if you have any questions about the concepts that we discuss in these videos or any of the CPPS uh, programs, don't hesitate to reach out to info at cpps.com. Again, I'm Dave Benson, signing off until next time. Stay safe out there.